Tuesday morning to you. It is 10 a.m. Time to get started. I hope you're doing well today. I uh, appreciate you taking the time to show up and join us here each day. Um, we are going to be in Revelation chapter 11, verses 1 through 11 um, today. And uh, interesting stuff, the two witnesses. Hmm, yeah. And I've got a book recommendation for you of How Now Shall We Live by Chuck Colson, Charles Colson, and Nancy Piercy. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Hello, Karen. First one on board today. Welcome. I hope you're having a good Tuesday so far. Good morning to you. All right, we've got four people watching and one person brave enough to chime in, so I need some others to say hello. Thank you, Kathy. I appreciate you chiming in, and I'm glad that you're here. Uh, we've got some others. Uh, I know that Cindy has a job now, so <laughs> it's a little bit trickier for her to chime in. Um, and she watches later, so that's fine. And many people do watch later. I know there's a lot of folks that um, find 10 a.m. a little bit difficult for one reason or another. Not because they're sleeping, but because they've got a lot going on. Um, <clears throat> all right. Um, let's see now. We've got oh, one person stopped watching. All right. Uh, welcome aboard. Again, we're in Revelation chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. This is the two witnesses. Very interesting. Uh, some good discussion here. And there's some controversy about who the two witnesses are. So we'll get into that a little bit. And uh, so what's going on? Six people watching, two people chimed in. And uh, let me turn off my ringer on my phone. Uh, say hello, chime in. Thank you, Dr. Fred. Actually here on time. Good morning to you. Lynn, peanuts, good to see you. Good sunshine day, isn't it? Yes, it is. Although it's a bit crisp outside. It is a wee bit crisp. Um, last night was just bitter cold. The wind was howling. I had to break out my winter coat. Yes, I did. <clears throat> okay. Um, Sheila B. is here. Good Tuesday morning to you, too. I'm so thankful for all of you. And... Uh, I was, uh, Sheila, I was telling them earlier, we're in Revelation chapter 11 today, verses 1 through 11. This is the two witnesses. The two witnesses. Very interesting stuff. I've got a book recommendation for you on How Now Shall I Live by Chuck Colson. Very good. Uh, we'll read the back of that or just a piece of it. Sheila Goff, Sweet Tater, welcome aboard. Glad you're here. Carolyn Coble, how are you? Thank you for tuning in. Um, all right, it's uh, three minutes after. It is time for the book review or book recommendation. It's not really a review. All right, so How Now Shall We Live by Charles Coulson. Uh, Christ true Christianity goes far beyond John 3.16, beyond private faith and personal salvation. It is nothing less than a framework for understanding all of reality. It is a worldview. Uh, worldview is something, if you're not familiar with the term, you should look it up because worldview is very important to the Christian. Um, this book talks about how to expose the false views and values of modern culture, how to live a more fulfilling and satisfying life in line with the way God created us to live, how to be more effective in evangelism by understanding how non-believers think, how to contend for the faith in a winsome way in every walk of life, and how to build a society that reflects biblical principles. Excellent. Highly recommend it. All right. It is now four minutes after. Hello, Gay Nell. Hello. Hello. Glad y'all are here. We're going to get into Revelation chapter 11. We're only going to do half of it. Uh, we're going to go to verse 11 and stop. Verse 1. And there was given me a measuring rod like a staff, and someone said, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and those who worship in it. Verse 2. And leave out the court which is outside the temple, and do not measure it, for it has been given to the nations, and they will tread underfoot the holy city for 42 months. Verse 3, And I will grant authority to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for 1260 days clothed in sackcloth. 4. There are, these are the two olive 
trees and the two lampstands that stand before the Lord of the earth. And if anyone desires to harm them, fire proceeds out of their mouth and devours their enemies. And if anyone would desire to harm them, in this manner he must be killed. Verse 6, These have the power to shut up the sky in order that the rain may not fall during the days of their prophesying. And they have power over the waters to turn them into blood and to smite the earth with every plague as often as they desire. Verse 7, And when they have finished their testimony, the beast that comes up out of the abyss will make war with them and overcome them and kill them. Verse 8, And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city which is mystically called Sodom and Egypt, where also their Lord was crucified. Verse 9, And those from the peoples and tribes and tongues and nations will look at the dead bodies for three and a half days and will not permit their dead bodies to be laid in a tomb. And those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them and make merry and they will send gifts to one another because these two prophets tormented those who dwell on the earth. Verse 11, our last verse for today. And after the three and a half days the breath of life from God came into them, and they stood on their feet, and great fear fell upon those who were beholding them. All right, we're going to stop right there. <clears throat> lots and lots of stuff here. Um, <laughs> let's uh, begin with verse 1, of course. And a rod, or a staff, a measuring stick, uh, uh, was given to measure the temple. Now keep in mind that a rod was an instrument of punishment. Um, Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The rod was for punishment. The staff was for rescuing. Victoria, good morning. You made it just in time. <clears throat> and so the he was going to measure the temple and everybody in it. By the way, this possibly might be a marker point for the mid-tribulation period. In the middle, right here. <clears throat> um, not that the not that the three not that the two prophets appear at the mid-tribulation period because they prophesied for three and a half years. Um, we'll get into that. Verse 2. Not the outer court, which is the court of the Gentiles, not supposed to be measured. Um, and the, these um, two witnesses are <clears throat> um, told to be there for three and a half years. Um, they have authority to prophesy for three and a half years. And then the big discussion, this is the real controversial thing, who are the two witnesses? <laughs> um, <clears throat> so there's three people in, in Scripture that are said to be the two prophets, uh, the two witnesses. Um, one is Elijah, and that one's easy because Scripture plainly says in Malachi chapter 4, verses 5 and 6, that Elijah's one of them. So that's a given. Um, <clears throat> then some say Enoch because Elijah never saw death, and Enoch uh, never saw death. And so um, if you use Hebrews 9.27 as your proof text, um, um, that is it, appoint it is appointed to each man once to die, and then the judgment. Hello, Shirley. Welcome aboard. Miss Polly, good morning to you. Um, however, that may not be the case for the two witnesses. Um, Moses is the other person. So there's Enoch, Moses, and Elijah. Moses, because all of the miracles that are performed by these two witnesses are the miracles that Elijah and Moses had control over, that they did. They're familiar with them. They did them. Enoch, not so much. All right, so these, in verse 4, these are called the two olive trees and the two lampstands. Well, olive trees speaks to Judaism, and lampstand speaks to lighting the way witnesses. Uh, so that's also quite interesting. Verse 5 says, uh, And if anyone desires to harm them, fire proceeds out of their mouths and devour, devours their enemies. Very interesting. Uh, Jeremiah, um, Jeremiah 5.14. Let's see if I can find that. Jeremiah 5, verse 14. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, because you have spoken this word, behold, I am making my mouth, making, I am making my mouth, work, making, behold, I am making my words in your mouth fire. 
making the words in my mouth and your mouth fire. And this people would, and it will consume them. So this is like prophetic for the two witnesses. Um, and then um, if we were to go to Zechariah chapter 4, Zechariah chapter 4, uh, verse 3, also two olive trees by it, one on the right and right side of the bowl and the other on the left side, okay? And then verses 12, 13, and 14, um, and, I, and I saw for the second time, I said to him, what are the two olive branches which are beside the two golden pipes uh, which empty the golden oil from themselves? Um, and then verse 14, these are the two anointed ones who are standing by the Lord of the whole earth. So uh, more prophetic word towards uh, chapter 11, verse 5. The two witnesses, fire comes out of their mouths. All right, verse 6, power is given to them for three and a half years, which is half of the tribulation period. Um, power is given to them to stop the rain, to turn water into blood, and then it says, and to every plague <laughs> that they choose to use. Um, so if they are given power for three and a half years, and then we find out um, later on that they're, they're going to die, um, and the tribulation continues, well then they are, um, they are witnessing for the first three and a half years. Let's continue. Verse 7, the Antichrist will kill them when they are done witnessing, not until they're done. Um, he will overwhelm them, overpower them, and kill them. Um, verse 9, all of the world, every tongue, every tribe, every nation, watches them um, and, and watches them lay in the streets, which... You know, it's kind of gross because their bodies turn black and they're bloated for three and a half days. And it says in verse 10 that there's parties because they're dead. Because, you know, they had stopped the rain. They had turned the water into blood. They had all these plagues that they brought on the earth as they witnessed about Christ. Well, the heathen world who rejects God is having parties and they're giving each other gifts like it's Christmas for three and a half days. And how is it possible, only because of TV and internet, is it possible for all the world to be able to watch this and then to witness them come back to life in verse 11 with great fear. Everybody sees them. Ah! All right, so just a couple of tidbits. Not saying that this is how it is, but if the witnesses are um, active and witnessing for three and a half years, and then they die and resurrect after three and a half days, I'm wondering, I'm wondering if their death occurs on Black Friday, and they're resurrected um, Monday, Thursday, Black Friday, and they're resurrected on Easter <laughs> Sunday. Not, not that that's going to happen. It doesn't say that anywhere. Just I thought that that would be interesting. Of course, if that is the case, you could calculate backwards and see when the rapture, when the tribulation started. But, you know, you have to have that end marker to look back. And, but anyway, that's another story. All right, so our life application. These are the two witnesses. They're witnessing to the whole world. This is during the tribulation period. Um, you need to be a witness. I need to be a witness. We all need to be witnesses to the world. That is the Great Commission. Go forth into all the nations and preach, teach, raise up disciples, baptize them. I know most Christians are afraid. They're fearful. But you know, you can give out tracts. You can give out Gospels of John. You can um, give people the Jesus video. You can give them the link to the Jesus video um, in emails, in text, in Facebook Messenger. You can use Facebook as a way to be a witness. You don't even have to be able to get out of your house. You can use this very medium that we're on to be a great mighty witness to God. However many viewers you have on your Facebook page, that's how many people you should be able to witness to. However many emails you have access to, that's how many people you should be able to witness to. Whomever you have a home address to, you can mail them 
a Gospel of John. You want to know how to get Gospels of John and get them free in many instances? Um, go to um, <sighs> the Bi the uh, Bible Testament League. The uh, um, oh, what is the Gospels of Research Gospels of John? And there is a a ministry um, which gives out. Uh, New Testaments. I have liked it on my Facebook page many times, um, and so I'll try and find it and post it again real soon. Um, but you can get all kinds of glossy, beautiful covers. Um, there's some for Christmas with candy canes on them. All right, enough about that. <clears throat> Thank you for watching. I hope that tomorrow you will tune in to our Bible study, which Pastor Tom's going to be back, and he's going to be uh, giving us the Bible study tomorrow. I'm looking forward to it very much. And so tune in and uh, watch uh, that, and we will uh, continue with him. And then I'll be back Thursday to pick, God willing, uh, to pick up where we left off in chapter 11. So if you don't have a church family, we want to be your church family. You don't have a pastor, I'd love to be your pastor. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for all my brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray you will bless them. Uh, that you will guide them, that you will give them boldness to uh, witness to people, to tell people about Jesus. And we thank you. We give you all the glory in Jesus' precious and holy name. And all God's people said, amen, amen, and amen. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.